Hey everybody, Kelly Engineer here, and welcome to episode 1 on the Mod Spotlight for Ender Utilities. Ender Utilities is a mod created by Masa, and I am in Minecraft version 1.12.2, utilizing Ender Utilities version 0 0.7.15. Uh, Ender Utilities is a mod that I found out about... Uh, a couple of months ago really and I fell in love with it the second that it was introduced to me I've been learning all about it and it is incredibly complicated sometimes the instructions are a little bit vague but the functionality on every single one of these blocks is amazing there's not a single block in this pack that can't be utilized to amazing effect in any mod pack that it happens to be found in so I am happy to be able to present this mod spotlight to you uh, as always with my mod spotlights, all timestamps on what I'll be talking about are in the description. So if you don't care about uh, me talking about the dolly or me talking about the ender capacitors, you can always you can always skip that. Press the timestamp in the description and only go to the part that you want to see. Uh, this mod spotlight is going to be broken up into four different parts. The first part is going to be basic items. The second part is going to be storage blocks of which there are a bunch of storage blocks with a lot of functionality the third part is going to be weapons and tools and then the fourth part is going to be functionality blocks so yeah without any further ado let's get to it the first items you'll be creating in the mod are the ender alloys which come in three different types basic which are made with four iron ingots and one ender pearl and you'll get four for your trouble the Enhanced, which is made with one Ender Pearl and four Gold Ingots. And the Advanced, which is made with two Eye of Ender, two Gold, two Iron, and two Obsidian, and a Diamond. These alloys will be crafting components for the vast majority of all machines in Ender Utilities, and you'll be using quite a bit of them, so make quite a bit of them. The second crafting ingredient are the Ender Cores, which also come in three different types. You have the Basic, which is made with four Basic Ender Alloy and a Redstone Block, and four Obsidian. The Enhanced, which is made with four Enhanced Ender Alloy, four Obsidian, and an Emerald. And the Advanced, which is made with four Obsidian, four Advanced Ender Alloy, and one Diamond. The Ender Cores come in two different types for each tier. You have one that is inactive and one that is active. In order to activate it, you have to go to the end. So I have inactive Ender Cores right here, and I'm going to go into the end. In order to activate the ender cores, you are going to need an active end crystal inside the end, and it will need to be placed. And then you right click with the cores, and they all become active ender cores. The ender core can also be sitting on obsidian, it does not have to be sitting on bedrock in order to activate it. However, the ender core, correction, the ender crystal does need to be in the end in order for the ender core to activate. I am right clicking on this ender crystal right now in the overworld. And it is doing nothing. You have to be in the end in order to charge up your ender cores. In order to make some of the more intermediate ender utilities items, you are going to need ender infused sticks, which is made with four sticks, and an ender pearl, and ender rope, which is made with six pieces of string, an ender pearl, and two pieces of leather. And you'll get two sticks for your trouble and four rope for your trouble. Now the Recipes that these can be used in are a little bit weird. However, like I said, the intermediate level recipes all require the ender infused stick. So make sure that you uh, have a little bit of them, but it's not something they're ever going to need to be stocked up on at all times. Same thing with the ender rope. You can have a couple of them, but after you've crafted some of these items, you really don't need to worry about making any more of them. That's why it's the intermediate tier stuff. The next item we're going to go over is the inserter, which is made with six basic ender alloy ingots, three pieces of glass, and there's a filtered variant as well, which is made with a comparator in the center. Now the way that these work is a little bit confusing because if you look at them, the description for them says it is sort of like a pipe, but not really a pipe, and it will try to insert items into enabled sides first. However, it doesn't tell you what it takes in order to enable those sides, so I'm going to go over those. Now I'm going to place a chest right here, and then an inserter, and we'll place two inserters, and then another chest. If I put any items inside of the chest, they immediately get taken out and pushed down the line into the outside chest, same as any other type of piping would do. However, with an empty hand, if you shift right click, 
you'll see that an inserter side output just appeared and it is red right now but if i place a chest it becomes green showing that this is now a valid output and if i put the items inside of it instead of going outwards it will go to the first output that it sees instead now this can also be messed with a little bit more by once again using an empty hand changing another output i'll put a chest and if i start throwing items in here what it's going to do is it is going to start splitting the load between what the items are so it started with the filtered inserter going in here and then the regular inserters and then the chest so that's all well and good because it took the full size of the stack now if i go into the inserter configuration you'll see that the stack limit is 64. i can lower that down to one i can raise it uh, let's put it at 32 and take our items back and i'm going to throw them back in here and you see that because i have a stack limit of 32 it just split evenly 32 of each item into each chest and you could do that with uh, you can do that with any type of stack limit the max stack limit is 64 so it will take one full stack of items and then split them evenly with this is really uh this chest at the end really just acts as an overflow buffer now in the case of the filtered inserters they operate differently based on their placement so right now i have a filtered inserter attached to my input chest which means whenever I choose what I want to filter, and right now I have regular inserters, I need to change this to filter is for side outputs into filter is for input pulling. And then I have it on a whitelist. So anything that I input inside here, you'll see that the inserter started going, but nothing else left the chest. And then they went into the side outputs, no problem. Now, if you have the inserter selected into filter is for side outputs, you see that everything just started moving its way through and it acted as if it was a normal inserter, no problem. So you need to make sure that that setting is correct before setting up a filtered inserter on the input chest. Now, if I wanted to put the filtered inserter on the output side, then I need to make sure that I have filter is for side outputs and I have the inserter set as my filter, throw in all of the items, and this time everything did leave the chest, but only the regular inserters went into my side outputs. The rest of it went into my overflow chest. And that is how the filtered inserters work. Now there's uh, some craziness that you have to do in order to get these to work as a uh, longer line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have this right here and place another chest. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to place this, but you see that the direction is wrong. You always have to be moving away from wherever you want this to go. So place a chest, put an inserter, and now I have the arrow going in the correct direction. And, oh, got to have that going in the correct. Here we go. And now with an empty hand, enable the side output. And now this line can be used as a side output. So you, no matter what, you have to enable a side output in order for any branches to work properly. Our next item is the chair wand, which is made with two basic ender alloy ingots and one chair block. Now it operates very, very simply. I'm going to go ahead and grab one of them and I'm going to grab a stair as well. If you place a stair block or anything that you want to act as a chair and right click with the chair wand, you see that a little bounding box just appeared on top of my piece of stair. So now with an empty hand, if I right click it, this thing is acting as a chair. Now it's kind of weird right now by default, so I'm going to get off of this thing. And we are going to get rid of this chair. So to get rid of it, all you have to do is left click it when you have the wand in hand. And I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to scroll through and try to get a better, let's see here, width 430, uh, width 5 is fine. And then if you hold alt and scroll, you're going to change the height of this. I'm also going to change that to five and I'm going to right click once more. All right. That's a, that's a little bit better. Whenever you try to sit on the chair block, it's always going to sit you on top of the top of your little bounding box that you've made. So you're going to have to adjust it a little bit. And luckily the mod gives you the opportunity to, to do that. So once again, I'm going to, change this to the lowest setting, which is 63, right click. And now if I want to sit in the chair, 
It looks proper, kind of. <laughs> so yeah, it does take a little bit of fiddling around in order to get the proper chair look. But if you are big into using chisels and bits, then this chair wand was made exclusively for using chisels and bits. And that is how the chair wand works. Next up, we have the ender bucket, which is made with three ender, basic ender alloy ingots, one bucket, and a small ender core, an inactive ender core. And the ender bucket has some more advanced functionality, but I'm only going to be going over the basic functionality in this episode, and that is over here, it will hold 16 buckets. You see that I am filling up the bucket right now. And once you reach 16, it will start pouring out and using the lava that is inside this bucket or any fluid. It can hold any fluid that it wants. There are also different modes for it as well. If I hold H, which is what I have my toggle key at, you'll see that I have an import mode, I have an export mode, and then I have normal, which will import or export depending on the situation. So if I have this in... Here we go, this mode right here, you'll see that I can't place anything. That's because this bucket can only receive items now. So if I did have nothing in this bucket, I could only take lava from this tank. And then having an output mode, I can only output, but I cannot ingest anything. So yeah, just something to keep in mind for the ender bucket. Oh, let's change the mode. There we go. All right, and like I said, there is more advanced functionality for the Ender Bucket, but I'm going to have to go over that in a later episode once we go over what the tool workbench is and what portal crystals are. Next up is the Nullifier, which is made with two lava buckets, four chests, and two basic Ender alloy. Now this item is very, very handy, and it should be very familiar if you know about the Open Blocks Nullifier or the Dank Null mod. And all I have to do is if I hit toggle, which is H for me, then I can open up the nullifier interface. What this is going to do is I can throw in any item that I want into here and it will store this item. And that means that any other item that I throw onto the ground, such as this stone, granite, polished granite, if I want to pick it up, instead of going back into my inventory, it will go into the nullifier instead. So I have 128 of polished granite, granite, and stone. Now the max stack that you can hold in here is 1,024 items. After that, anything else that is tried to add to the nullifier will automatically be deleted instead. Now one of the great functionalities about this particular nullifier is that if I hold shift and toggle, you'll see that a little lock icon appears down in the bottom of it. That means that anything that I throw onto the ground at this point when I try to pick it up, it won't go into the nullifier, it instead, go, it instead goes back into my inventory. Alternatively, instead of hitting shift toggle, you can just hit the toggle button, and that button is right here. So if I select an item over here, you see that when I select an item, that means that I can place it from the nullifier and it will use up the buffer inside the nullifier in order to pick it up for me. So that's all well and good. Now, if I open this up, well, if I lock this again, it still is not going to change the fact that I can place blocks. The locking only affects when things are trying to go into the nullifier, so don't worry about that. And finally, we have the dolly, which is made with two enhanced ender alloy ingots and one slime block. Now, the dolly is a very, very interesting item because it can move anything that has an inventory. And in order to properly demonstrate, I should be in survival mode. So I can grab any chest that I want and I can move it. Now, the weird thing about it is it's always going to move itself to the orientation that you picked it up at. So you see that I have the opening of the chest is here on the left side. If I pick it up and place it, it's going to place it with the opening of the chest on the left side. So you have to be careful to make sure that uh, if you have OCD or OCPD or something, that you're always going to be picking it up on the side that you want to be facing forward. Now, this uh, does have some very weird functionality as far as uh, modded chests are concerned. So you see I have these barrels, but they're in create barrels from Ender Utilities. They're in creative mode right now, which means I cannot pick them up. And same thing with this energy cell in creative, I can't pick it up. This resonant ender tank, or portable tank, I cannot pick up. 
if I had a thermal strong box right here and I tried to pick it up, the orientation acts a little bit weird. And this is true of all modded chests with the exception of Ender Utilities chests, of course. So if I pick this up right now and I place it, the orientation is always going to be facing whichever way you picked it up. So it is facing, it is facing east right now. So if I pick it up and place it back down, the opening is still facing east. It is not facing the orientation that I would have that I would have expected it to. So yeah, you got to be a little bit careful with those modded chests, and I can't pick up Ender chests at all. And of course, Ender Utilities chests have no problem whatsoever. They're always going to be facing the orientation that I picked them up at. So facing towards me, facing towards me. So yeah, be careful with the modded chests. You cannot pick up any creative blocks with it. But otherwise, anything that has an internal inventory can be picked up. You see that I just picked up this loot fabric, uh, correction, this simulation chamber right here. So place it back down. There we go. Since the simulation chamber has an internal inventory, the dolly had no problem picking it up. Now that being said, if you are in creative mode, this has no problem picking up any block whatsoever. So, I can pick up my portable tank, I can place it down, I can do the same with the energy cell. If you are in creative mode, this just becomes a matter manipulator. And can move any block that you want. And yeah, that is the dolly, it's a very, very useful tool. Next up is flooring, which is made with two sticks and six planks of any different type. You're only going to get one for your trouble, however these are very very handy and they are very nice decorative looking blocks as you can see. So it looks just like a, uh, like the flooring you would find in an old cabin. Uh, going over here I have some more placed and you see that they are a little bit popped off off of the ground. And they do have a really nice aesthetic look to them, so I'm very happy with these. There's another variant of them, however, called Cracked Floors, and instead of using two sticks, you're going to be using an Ender-infused stick instead. Now, the difference between this floor and the other floor, or the Cracked Floor, is the fact that items can slip through. So I have these cows right here, and I am going to spawn a cow. And you see that the cow died but there's no item on top of it. That's because the item is below. So items will fl fall through the cracks of these floors. If I went over to the normal flooring and tried to drop a cow, the cow will die, but you see that the items stay up here on top. So that is the flooring and the cracked flooring. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot change the look of them. So you have this acacia look for the cracked flooring and you have a spruce look for the regular flooring. No matter what plank you use or what type of stick you use, you're always going to have that look, so the acacia and the spruce respectively. So keep that in mind if you decide to use this flooring in any of your base building. The last items we're going to go over in episode 1 are the syringes. So an empty syringe is made with a piece of glass, a ender infused stick, and an enhanced ender alloy ingot. And you'll only get one for your trouble. But that's perfectly fine because you can fill up the syringe with uh, a with three different types of solutions. You have the paralyzing, the stimulant, and the pacifier syringe. The paralyzer is made with a fermented spider eye, a brown mushroom, and then a red mushroom. The stimulant is made with sugar, glistening melon, and a carrot. And the pacifier is made with two cookies, a cake, a carrot, and a piece of sugar. So the names of the syringes pretty much speak for themselves, but there is a difference between the paralyzer and the pacifier. So the paralyzer syringe paralyzes mobs. It sets the no AI flag. But the pacifier syringe removes target AI tasks. So I am in creative right now, which means that a zombie or a skeleton will not target me under any circumstances. If I was in survival mode, you see that the zombie and the skeleton started trying to attack me. If I hold on to a pacifier syringe and hit the skeleton with it, oh, there we go. So I have just removed targeting tasks from the skeleton. It will not attack me even though I am in survival mode. And then with the paralyzer syringe, all I have to do is hit a zombie and now he will not move under any circumstance. He won't 
turn around. He won't try to move towards me. Nothing will happen with this zombie. I can remove this. And yeah, he doesn't sense me, so he won't come towards me. Same with the skeleton. The skeleton is in a pacified state with no targeting AI. Therefore, it can still walk around. It can still do whatever it wants, but it will never target me. The thing about the pacifier syringe, though, is that if something attacks a pacified mob, it's going to return to the normal hostile state. That is not the case with the paralyzer syringe. No matter what I do to this zombie, it will not regain its AI. In order for it to regain its AI, I have to use the stimulant syringe. And there we go. Start burning up for me, buddy. And that is how these syringes work. They're uh, pretty handy. Especially if you plan on having like uh, some sort of zoo around and you don't want the uh, patrons of your zoo or the things that are inside your zoo attacking. Uh, to my knowledge, this will work on anything that has an AI and I have never tried it on another player. But now a player isn't subject to AI so it won't work on them. But anything that does have an AI can be subjected to the syringes so have fun with that. And there you have it. That is all of the basic items inside of Ender Utilities. There are a couple of things that I wanted to go over, but I realize that I can't go over them without breaching into other episodes of this mod spotlight. Uh, stuff like the inventory swapper or things like the ruler. I can't really go into that without crafting items that I'm going to go over in another episode. So the ruler and the inventory swapper will be gone over in the next episode when I go over memory cards. But as always, if you have any questions about anything that I went over in this mod spot in episode one of this mod spotlight, put them in the comments. And if you didn't see anything that you thought I was going to go over, just wait because there are three other episodes that are going to be released for this. Uh, so I am Kelly Engineering. I hope that you did enjoy this episode and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.